Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is David Holdsworth, the Executive Director of Brothers Brother Foundation. Thank you so much for joining me today, David. Thank you, Katherine. It's great to be here. So I am a Rotarian, and I first found out about Brothers Brother Foundation because Dr. Sarah John, for the last five years, has been doing medical missions to Chantal Haiti. Yes. And your organization has been very fundamental to supporting that effort. And you've got a very interesting story about your founder and how you came to do this kind of support for medical missions. And I would love to share that with the people who are watching. Sure, thank you so much for having us today. Um, it, it is an amazing story how Brothers Brother uh, got started. It, it's a story of an individual who had such a great heart for those that had nothing. Um, and Dr. Hingston, uh, really as an anesthesiologist, both as a research anesthesiologist and as a practicing anesthesiologist, spent his life trying to improve people's lives here in the United States as well as overseas. So during his time both uh, in Cleveland at the Mayo Clinic and also um, at University of uh, Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, created a number of different devices that uh, to us today would seem simple. Right. Um, one of the basic ones is, is the epidural, right? which most women in the developed world just love and right. are so I've thankful had, I've had for. three of them, three epidurals, so I can attest to the fact that that was a great invention. It, it, was, it was tremendous. And, um, he, he you know, never took advantage of his, his creations or his, his developments. Uh, he always just made them available uh, in, the, in the interest of public health. Um, his other major uh, invention was uh, the, uh, the jet gun. And he came back from several inoculation trips in Africa. He spent a lot of time in Liberia um, and was really very concerned about the status of polio and some other, so many other diseases that can be uh, eradicated. Um, and he just went to a friend and said, hey, can you help me with this? And they came up with the jet gun, which allows you to inoculate up to 1,000 people per hour without being concerned about sterilization of a needle, and, you know, cross-infection, and those kinds of issues. Um, his major advance really is, was in the area of, of polio and was right. able to um, you know, eradicate polio uh, almost single-handedly in right. several countries. Right. Um, however, he recognized at a point, and this was even after he had started Brothers Brother Foundation, um, that he'd, he and Brothers Brother Foundation didn't have the, really the resources uh, to continue this in a worldwide manner. Uh, to really have the high impact that he, he had dreamt of. Um, so uh, he had been a, a lifelong Rotarian. He uh, had been getting support from the Rotary. Then they had come to him and proposed that Rotary would take over the program. Yes, yes, I'm well aware. Rotary International is still trying to eradicate polio. Every time we think we almost have, a few more cases pop up somewhere, but we're yeah, close. We're very, close. very, very close. No, few in Syria now, some in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, but it is, uh, it is a disease that has been, you know, through a billion dollar effort through the Rotary. Yes. Uh, and to, you know, to their credit and to the members' credit, really eradicating a very terrible disease. So Brothers Brother and the Rotary have, you know, kind of the symbiotic interest, absolutely. relationship over many years. Uh, we still, uh, our current president, uh, Dr. Hinkson's son, Luke Hinkson, uh, is, is still a Rotarian. We still go out and, and do our uh, presentations at local Rotaries as well um, and gain their support. We're just really happy that, uh, you know, organizations like the Rotary Club are partners of Brothers Brother Foundation. It's the power of collaboration. Absolutely. It really is. And so it started out in Pittsburgh. It was Brothers Brother Foundation was started in 1958. Yes. So it's been a, a long period of time that you've been doing this work, but you only came to Fairfax in 2013? Yes. So uh, our, our Pittsburgh operations started, uh, actually, I, I believe it was incorporated in Ohio, actually, in Cleveland before you came to Pittsburgh. But we're going to celebrate our 60th anniversary wow, next year. 60 years. So for a charity, that's, that's a long, quite a history. Yes, it is. And obviously, health has been a major core part of what we've done uh, since 1958. Uh, we have gotten into a number of other areas, um, you know, providing humanitarian relief, providing seeds and clothing. 
Um, but the core has always been health and, and enhancing people's health around the world. Um, so our work here in Fairfax County started um, because another org like organization was, was closing. In 2008, they became financially stressed and uh, the organization was called Crosslink at the time. And uh, they had literally closed their doors already. So there was kind of this already a network of individuals, of volunteers, of staff, um, of donors, material donors, and financial donors that were here. And um, Brothers Brother took it on themselves to come, to visit, to explore that network and see if we had the support to open a new office. So we actually opened a facility that was three times the size of what Crosslinks was. Wow. And I was there at the grand opening. I didn't work for Brothers Brother at the time. And I, always, and I told Luke, our current president, I said, Luke, big space. You're, gonna, you're really going to fill this? You know, are you really going to utilize all of this space? Well, today we have twice as much space. Wow, that's Our growth amazing. growth has been exponential. Um, we've really been blessed with uh, so many material donors uh, in this market. And um, obviously, uh, Inova Hospital being sort of our, our host hospital s system here. And it's a large system. It is a very large system. And uh, they were very supportive from the very beginning, uh, from the top of the organization, uh, with Knox Singleton, right. you know, down to the workers on the dock. Uh, they really understand. Um, what we can do for the hospital from a sustainability perspective and also the impact that we're having uh, in the developing world. Um, as you may know, uh, a loosely associated organization called Coalition, uh, Community Coalition for Haiti mm -hmm. is not directly related or supported uh, by ANOVA, but many of their staff are deeply involved and uh, they provide medical services in Jacques Mel, Haiti and they and Sarah yeah, John are, yeah, I know. are <laughs> yeah. thick and thin. They are. Thick, they thick are. In the, in and that has been what's together. been great about um, about things like the mission that Sarah does is that people, you know, she has volunteer pharmacists, volunteer nurses, volunteer mm -hmm. physicians, volunteer dentists. These are all people who are taking time off from their practices here in the U.S. Yeah. to go to Haiti and to some of these very remote places. And you're right. In addition to the the in-kind donations of equipment and things that they need, a lot of medical professionals in this area have donated their time. Yes. So we're sort of uh, an infrastructure that can support uh, both an organization and an individual, a medical professional that's providing those kinds of services. Um, as we collect materials, uh, we sort them in a way that allows us to have materials readily available for medical mission teams that are going overseas. Um, those materials come from our warehouse here in Fairfax. Pharmaceuticals that support the same teams are located in Pittsburgh and provided, all of this is provided on a, on a free basis. So we actually even provide the shipping to the location yeah, where the individual is. That's what we have found has been a challenge for us is things that people can take in their luggage, which is preferable, but there are things that have to be shipped in containers. And so sure. that's one of the things too where you do need monetary donations because those Certainly. are the kinds of things that you know you have to pay for shipping especially if it's going overseas absolutely as a 60 year old organization um, we've been uh, rewarded by our longevity in Pittsburgh Pittsburgh has a lot of old money a lot of families that have been you know in old industrial families and so there's m many foundations that support us there um, we you know you go down through the industrial giants in Pittsburgh right. and they're all there in, in, in multiple ways um, but it's it's also great uh, to see the number of individuals here in the Fairfax and Northern Virginia area that actually support us as well financially um, it's a key part you know of, of our success here uh, in total um, it's also a success for us to have so many volunteers that are willing to come and help us out. And it goes back to Sarah John. I haven't, I mentioned to you. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a while. I haven't seen her in a while. She's busy. She has yeah, other She does. She has a practice in the, in the Grand Canyon. She's, at the, yes. she's in Supai, I think, two, two weeks out of the month. So I haven't seen her volunteer recently. She, I'm sure she's been in and out of Haiti a couple mm -hmm. of times. Uh, I know the clinic that she's operating there was damaged by Math uh, Hurricane Matthew. Yes, it was. And uh, we lost equipment. We were too. very, we were very happy to help 
provide a little bit of equipment back to her and certainly s supplies. Um, we've done about 10 or 12 containers into Haiti since Hurricane Matthew and about six airlifts of supplies and pharmaceuticals. Um, so some of that got to Sarah John, some of it got to Community Coalition for Haiti, and to many other partners uh, providing medical services to those that have been impacted uh, by that hurricane. Um, and we continue. Uh, just had the Executive Director for Community Coalition for Haiti in our office, continuing to plan and work together. Um, hope to see Sarah John soon. <laughs> I'll <laughs> well, let her know. <laughs> she, she wanders in, she volunteers, and then says, here's my list. Yeah, right, because I think she does feel like, you know, she wants to volunteer, but because you do so much for what yeah. she's doing. I mean, that's the nature of collaboration, too. Absolutely. People are giving you in-kind donations, and you're redistributing them. I like the fact that you're basically recycling, repurposing, and reusing equipment that hospitals here no longer want or need, or it's been replaced. Right. So we are keeping that out of landfills or wherever equipment goes that's not used. Yeah, as, as an example, in 2016, we, we reutilized almost a half a million pounds of medical supplies and equipment. Um, at one project that kind of stood out in 2016 was when Anoa Fairfax opened up their new women's and children's hospital. Um, they opened seven floors of medical equipment and, and room furniture up to us, and we were able to take about 60,000 pounds and, and put about seven or eight containers uh, on the water to support health you know, systems around the world. Um, it was a huge collaboration, and we're very pleased to be working with Inova. Um, they continually show uh, what sustainability looks like in the healthcare industry. They have staff that are specific for sustainability. Uh, they have quality improvement staff that we work with as well. Uh, we're continuing to grow that relationship, not just at the dock, uh, where many things come out of their supply chain process, but also in the medical units. We actually have bins in about a dozen medical units within the Fairfax campus. And on a weekly basis, we have staff that circulate through the hospital and collect those materials as well. And they're very high impact uh, in our ministry, uh, but certainly in the hand carry program, where we're, we, 2016, we impacted uh, with our partners providing those services about 114,000 people around the world. And that's incredible because where would it come from if it didn't come from Brothers Brother Foundation, right? So you you are supporting a lot of international missions. Yes. And after we take this break, I want to come back and talk a little bit about how you're working locally too, because you actually have local work you're doing in addition to shipping all of these wonderful needed supplies to missions around the world. So please join us after this break when we'll be talking with David Holdsworth of Brothers Brother Foundation. Calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. My <laughs> whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and today we're talking with David Holdsworth, the Executive Director of Brothers Brother Foundation. So David, tell me a little bit more about how you are working with a variety of organizations here in Fairfax County, including some educational organizations. Uh, th to me, this is one of the most exciting things that we've really been exploring over the last year. Um, while, you know, obviously our mission is not education, it's not really engaging students. There is a, a tremendous need um, by our organization to have volunteer and support services come in and, and help us. Right. 
So uh, as an example, in 2016, we had about 2,400 hours, volunteer hours. And these are anywhere from a GMU student to you know, a retiree who has been a long time volunteer starting in the Crosslinks days. Um, but where we're going is really a higher, you know, a much more higher need. Our volume continues to, you know, to increase. We have partners asking for more materials. We have partners giving us more materials. And so we need people kind of in the middle to help us with our processing, to help us with the sorting, and help us make sure equipment that we receive is in good working order. So um, about this time last year, we started a dialogue with uh, GMU. Um, and as you know, one of the largest educational institutions in the state of Virginia, uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, it uh, it was you know it's quite easy to understand what you know what we can do together. It's a little more challenging to find the right people within the organization to, to help work you with specific needs. Very specific needs. So we started out with a couple of uh, volunteer days. Uh, they have a 9/11 day. They have a spring. Uh, spring day where they do volunteer work. We went on campus, we did some things together, and from that we found some students who were really interested and they've been really great volunteers. We had some frat guys come in. Uh, they were a lot of fun and they sorted with us uh, multiple times over the school year. Um, but we've also been dialoguing with them um, on a much more academic level. So as we were talking at the break, uh, we had a faculty member in just yesterday uh, from their bioengineering program, and we're trying to put together a relationship so that their bioengineering students can come in and help us identify um, an appropriate repair process for equipment that's donated to us, test it out, make sure all the equipment is there, all the probes, the, the manuals are there, uh, replacement parts if needed are there before it's shipped overseas. So it has the highest impact as it's going into country. Um, so we're very excited about that relationship. Um, we've also had a, a really great relationship um, from an educational point of view with the Falls, for, with the uh, Fairfax County School District. Um, it started out as kind of a give back to the community. There are certain materials that we can't ship, and it hurts us when we have to throw things away. Oh, absolutely. And yet they have such high impact, high value, if you can put them into the right environment. Um, so. Uh, through uh, a third party, we were introduced to the, uh, one of the staff members at Fairfax who manages these kinds of gifts in kind uh, to the school district and very quickly became connected with um, the um, parts of the, uh, the high school that are involved in medical arts uh, training. So, you know, they have MA training, they've got EMT training, they've got farm tech training. Um, so there's along the way in those curricula, there's places where they need equipment. They need an IV. They need the drip sets. They need just for educational just training for purposes. Just for educational training purposes. So while we didn't give them large value vol volumes last year, we know that the one pallet that we gave into uh, the MA training program to them was worth about ten thousand dollars. Wow! What a great way to support the school system. So this was just this is you know right simple you for us. This is great. We love it. Um, we know, you know, that these are these are materials that we would be throwing away. These are materials that have been donated, a lot of them from Innova, from Fairfax. It's great to repurpose them into the educational system. That's actually going to help Innova continue to be successful with well-trained staff. Right, because that's that's exactly it. You are training the future workforce for exactly these medical institutions. So we're reaching out beyond Fairfax. Um, as far as educational institutions, we've been having some conversations with Georgetown, and we look to expand it in, you know, really into the region. But our genesis was here in, Fa in Fairfax, and it's really been a great education to us to understand what their needs are and be able to, you know, talk to Manassas and talk to some of the other county schools as well. You know, so how do you manage that? So, you know, there's a lot, because I sit on the board of several nonprofits, and there's something called Mission Creep which we all try to avoid, mission creep. Yes. But sometimes there's opportunities that lead you in a direction you didn't anticipate, like supporting school systems, but tend to be a perfect match. It seems like a lot of these seem to have come your way since you arrived here. Yes, um, I, I guess I don't view it as mission I understand what you're talking about, but for us, this is just 
continuing to be a green organization. This is continuing to reutilize materials you know, in, in an impactful way. That, I think it fits with your mission. It, and I, it but really I like does. the fact that you embrace that yeah. new opportunity over saying, but wait a minute, do we have the resources? Do we have the bandwidth? Can we manage it all? Well, um, the need, it, it's not a, a, a day to day dialogue. It's a, we give them some materials, they digest them over the semester. We continue to talk about what maybe they need, but it, it's, it's not a, a hard management. Um, we also do reach out to other organizations within, you know, Fairfax and, and other counties around us. Um, we have kind of a mutual relationship with a number of, of the free clinics. Uh, people will donate materials to them that they can't you know, or equipment they can't use. They know to call us up. We'll come by and pick it up from them. A lot of it's mobility, you know, wheelchairs, walkers, those cranes, those kinds of things. Yeah, because you were talking about the whole. Because there's a lot. The majority of older people are actually being cared for at home. Yes. They're not being cared for in an institution. That seems to be something people don't, everybody's not in a nursing home. The mm -hmm. majority of people are at home with either family members as caregivers or with paid home health caregivers. And yeah. that generates, I would imagine, a tremendous amount of equipment. It does. Um, we have a continuing growing donation flow from private individuals that just know of us, have been referred to us. Um, often it's their local pharmacist, you know, oh, I've got X in my house, do you know anybody? Uh, sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's where they purchase the materials from, uh, whether it's a home health care bed or, or other supplies. Um, so that's a growing um, flow for us, and it is really very impactful. Um, the problem that we have is we don't have the staff to really go out, reach out, and collect those collect materials. It. So it has to be give, so brought to you. It has to be brought to you. We really appreciate you know people bringing those materials to us, and when we can support you know that process, we do. But um, it really is the fact that we just don't have the opportunity. We don't have the staff um, or the equipment really to go out because you go into someone's home and pick up a bed on the third floor. Right. It's an intensive you right. know process. And it just we just don't have the paid staff related to accomplish that. That sounds like we need to get a collaboration going with a moving company. We'll circle back around to that. That's, that's a great idea. We'll circle back around to that that's because a there's a lot idea. of moving companies that actually are looking for volunteer opportunities. And it seems to me even if you had their truck and a couple of guys once a month and could yeah. go and do that, yeah. I'm going to hook you up after the show. Okay. But, that okay. sounds great. Love it. Um, some of the other local, you know, relationships that we're in, uh, we've supported A-SPAN. They have a five-bed uh, medical unit in in the homeless shelter there in Arlington. Um, it's it's really been a great relationship. There's not a lot of need, but once in a while they're asking for very specific things, and we're very happy to support them, along with other free clinics in the area. We continually dialogue with with uh, many of them. Um, so it's 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 great for us to be able to give back, you know, into the community. We really feel that's an important part. Um, one of the funnier things um, when I first started with Brothers Brother, there were these big, huge bags laying around of the blue drapes, surgical drapes. I'm like, what are we doing with this? Why why are they, they're hanging around? And then all of a sudden one day they disappear, and I'm like, okay, where did they go? Well, they went off to the animal shelter. Really? Yes. Do they put them inside the they cages? Use the ca yeah, they use them to line the cages what for the animals. What a great idea. So obviously they're absorbent and right. they're recycled. Right, recycle, repurpose, recycle. reuse, right? Yeah, exactly. What a great use for something like so that. So it, it's little things like that that we're so so pleased about. And, and all of these things add to the fact that we're able to utilize about 90% of the materials that are given to us by weight. And we're just you know always looking for ways to, to get to that 100%. Um, we really feel that uh, that's kind of the measurement of our success uh, going forward. So, um, if so you have any other ideas, we're, we're open to Oh, listen, I've, I'm, I've got more ideas than a dog's got fleas. Okay. But tell me a little bit about your staffing uh, and the size of your staff. And I'm assuming that you've got volunteers and you're always looking for volunteers. And how can people engage with your organization? Yeah, we, we love volunteers. Um, we're, we're learning how to do volunteers. We've had a really great core of, of folks like Dr. Sarah John, right. who really embrace us because of her other work, um, humanitarian work. Um, but we have people that have been with us a long time, and some of the students uh, from GMU, it was really great to get to know them over the semester. You know, some of them are pre-med, some of them, you know, are, are bioengineering students. And it's just really great to, to learn, you know, how is this impacting, 
you know, your educational opportunities. Right. And uh, I remember talking earlier um, in, this, in the school year uh, with one of the uh, pre-med students, and she was just telling me how wonderful it was to come and volunteer. She was handling things she just wouldn't see for another five to six years. See, that's a win-win. And it just really made sort of it what connects, she's learning yeah, it in a book. the docs in a, dots in a different way. Right. And so um, we're always looking for volunteers to help us on multiple levels. Uh, most of it, we try to bring them in and teach them in some way to manipulate what has been donated to us. That's right. really kind of the core need that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but t going back to the Davis Center, we're really excited about having you know a really good group of their students coming in next semester. Um, and we've got a whole different level of opportunities for them from you know helping us break down boxes so we don't have we don't get buried in, in empty right. boxes to you know helping us with keeping the space clean to helping us do some simple sorts. We also put kits together. So we'll have hygiene kits and birthing kits and those kinds of things. And we find, you know, both our, uh, you know, regular. regular volunteers and some of our special volunteers from Davis Center really enjoy that kind of work. Um, so we're always looking for great volunteers and encourage them to, to give us a call. Um, I think the other, what was the other part of your question? Well, I was saying you've got a very small staff, I'm assuming, Thank you. too. Um, we do. Yeah, and this has been do. this has been a real transition for us because really early on it was the staff doing the sorting and sort of manipulating all these materials. And we've really, because of the the significant increase in flow, have had to move into a much more volunteer environment. Um, so we have a volunteer coordinator, we've got uh, Myself, we've got an individual that sort of manages a lot of our inventory work and those kinds of things, the truck driver. Um, and that's pretty much it right now. I figured it was small. Most nonprofits <laughs> have very small staffs. Well, I appreciate you joining us and letting people here in Fairfax County know more about what you do and how they can get involved. And you can find more information on their website. But again, this is something where Brothers Brother Foundation is supporting us locally as well as supporting organizations internationally. And this is what you need to know.